Hey, what's up, everybody? Here at camp, I, I, I left Arizona. I'm here in Colorado. I left Arizona yesterday. I just wasn't getting any sleep out there, and I, I was just exhausted. For like 30 days, I was just having like insomnia. I think a lot of it was the allergies that I have. And so uh, like all the micro dust in the air was just blowing all over the place. I couldn't. I just couldn't breathe it all at night. I was getting like one hour of sleep a night. So I, I finally hit my wits in yesterday when these people camped next to me. And uh, they were super loud. And so I just was like, I'm out of here. And I just drove straight up here to Colorado. And I'm camping south of Silverton, Colorado right now. Um, the dispersed camping is open over here. So I've got a really killer site. There's a, there's a waterfall just right here next to camp. And so um, we're going to go check it out here shortly. But just wanted to check in with everybody. I haven't really been posting much this week because my, my computer was broken. I had it in the shop in Sedona. And so... Um, yeah, but now it's fixed and it's great and it's working well and I'm looking forward to getting some sleep while I'm here. I wanted to show you one thing I did to the topper though. So you know how I've got this, I've got this slide out extension that comes out. Um, I ended up replacing the top with plexiglass and now it's, you can see through it. So I have like a, I have like a, um, a sun, a sunroof or whatever. I don't know what you call it really. I'm too tired to even think about it, but, um, I can let the sun in during the day and, I don't know. It's kind of cool. When it rains, it's going to be cool to see the the rain like go off the top of the of the plexiglass here. But it's nice to be able to see through it. And then also on the sides, I'm just using um, mosquito netting, and so just to make sure the bugs don't get in. So that's going to create some really good ventilation for the topper because, like right here, with with the way the windows are set up, I've got good cross ventilation on both sides. But that that's literally like where my feet are. You know, like where I'm at up here. It's all window on both sides. And so the, 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 the wind doesn't come across as much. It kind of goes in the center area here. And so having this as like a heat valve where if any you know, hot air rises, the heat can go out that little gap right there and it's just a mosquito net that's, that's covering everything up. So um, anyway, does anybody have any questions about anything? I'm, like I said, I was in Arizona for a while, but it just didn't work out. It was too, I was, um, I was just getting, I wasn't getting any sleep. And so I'm just, I came here to Colorado to get uh, to get cut up on sleep. I'm gonna put my put my shoes on right now. We're gonna go check out that waterfall. And I I, I kind of felt bad because uh, <laughs> uh, hey, what's up, Kenny? I felt kind of bad because I was gonna hang out with with um, with Down to Mob again, and then also uh, Craig. Um, Craig's over in Williams with Rue, and. Um, we were gonna go over there and fly fish and everything, but I just got to the point. I'm like, I can't sleep. I'm I'm out of here. I gotta go back to Colorado. So let me grab the router real quick. I want to put it over on the ridge because we need to make sure that we've got reception over there as I walk down. Here's the little router. By the way, I don't know if you guys saw that post I put up, but NetBuddy was open for like an hour today for new customers. And one of my friends was able to sign up. Sierra, come on. Let's come over here. I'll put this right here. We should be able to get connectivity all the way down. Come on, girl. Come here. Come here. You want to go on a little walk? Come here. Come here. Let's go. Everybody's watching you. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, let's go down and check this out. So, um, oh here, let me let me put my shoes on real quick. Oh, you hear me? But you see a thumbnail. Does anybody else does Does anybody else see see me, or do they just see a thumbnail? Lady Alex, does anybody else see anything? Yeah, there's snow out here. That was snow right there where the fire pit is. And there's a bunch of snow down over where the river is down here. So let's go down. We're going to check it out. All right, come on, let's go. Yeah, all right, cool. You all can see me. All right, we're going to walk down here. Now, I've already taken the drone out, and uh, I've got some really killer shots of this waterfall here. And it's it's just amazing. Like, here, we're going to walk this way and make it a little bit easier to traverse. Look this way, here. But uh, it's just really cool over here. This waterfall is jamming with um, with the snow melt right now. All right, so here's the upper view, and we're going to go down a little bit further. But I, I hope that I, you guys can see that. Yeah. So there's – we're kind of really high right now, and actually um, – You look out over this right here. That's where it kind of drops off and goes down a little bit further. So we're gonna 
walk up and around, get onto a lower section here. It's a little bit better to view. Good Sierra. And the temperatures here are real nice. It's supposed to get down to freezing tonight, which is that's definitely my cup of tea. And so um, I'm looking forward to that warmer temperatures. Uh, I think we could probably cut back across this way. Let's see. Hope you guys can still still get me here. I'm getting kind of far away from the router. Where is here? But I wanted to take you over to this spot right here. It's really cool right here. There's a rock. And we could look right into the, the, the waterfall here. So... So that's where I'm camping at right now. It's really incredible. And we got snow right here on the ground. And uh, I'm in a t-shirt because I've been hot in Arizona and I'm just soaking up all this nice cold weather. Um, let's see, I wonder. Yeah, but yeah, I bet the water's super cold. I mean, it's, it's all snow melt. So you can see right here on the side, there's still snow clinging to the uh, the canyon walls where, you, where the plug was. Come on, Sarah, let's go up here. Where the where the snow plug was that that uh you know forms when there's you know over the winter time so anyway but i'm planning on being here in this area for a couple weeks and then i gotta figure out what to do with that bumper because it's being made in california and it's in central california and i just keep hearing crazy stories hey come on sierra up here i keep hearing crazy stories about travel in sierra so or traveling in california I'm out of breath. <laughs> I haven't been hiking enough. Sierra, come on, up here, girl. All right, we're gonna sit down right here and kick it. Woo. All right, so how's everybody been? Everybody holding up okay? Seems to be this uh, epidemic just keeps going on further and further, so. I'm hoping that it shuts down or that everything kind of opens up soon and we get back to just normal stuff. The one thing that's nice about being out here at the moment is there's, there's no one around at all. So um, the water is not clean enough to drink. Excuse me, I'm out of breath. But I do have a water purifier so I could go and jam with that and, and get all cleaned up. Um, you know, the camping in Colorado, it, it depends. You got to look at the... Uh, the, the, the national forest and see what the regulations are. Cause like where I'm at right now, you can do dispersed camping, but it's, it's advised to stay home, but you know, I don't have a home. So, um, I'm, I'm out here doing, you know, the dispersed camping, but it, all of the fee places are all closed, like all the campgrounds, all that stuff. And you can't go there. And if you do go there and try to use it and they catch you, then I guess it's a ticket. So, um, as far as fishing goes, yeah, as soon as these streams, settle down a little bit with the, I mean, the, the, it's raging too much now, but as soon as the flow sub, uh, settles down a little bit, I'm definitely going to start fly fishing. So yeah, <laughs> self, uh, self isolation is definitely my MO. So, um, no, I'm not going to do the Atlantic too. That tw 20 by 12 is way too big for me. The 12 by 14 is too big. I'm actually thinking about going smaller. So one thing I did want to show you though, is I'm going to, I'm going to wood panel the side of this. I took off all all the reflectics that I had around it and sealed it up with some, um, some flex seal, just like that spray stuff. And then I'm going to panel it. I think I'm going to use a, um, ah, camper dude. Thanks man. I think I'm going to use a uh, pallet wood and stain it real cool. And then, and then put that on the side there. So I'm going to do that while I'm here and uh, I'll get that all on film. And then I, I want to film a bunch of other stuff here when I'm here. Like I want to talk about, you know, the advantages of using mosquito nets, um, talk about the battery system a little bit more. I've got a new battery coming. Um, the Max Oak company that I work with, they're sending me a new one. So I'll probably sell the 150 that I have and I'll sell it for a, a big old discount. So when that happens, I'll let y'all know. Um, and that battery has been great. I'm, no complaints at all, but the new one's even bigger. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh, no, I, I don't do any gold plant, uh, gold painting. I've, I've thought about it, but I just haven't ever, haven't ever got around to it. Reclaim wood, yeah, that, that, that would look super cool. I'm in Sonoma County. Oh man, Mark, that's 
I'm sorry, man. I hope I hope you're able to get out soon. About, I, I know I have a lot of people I know that have just been cooped up. My parents have been cooped up too. They they left this weekend though. I went down to go visit my brother because my nephew graduated from high school, which is crazy to think because I remember holding him in my arms when he was born. But um, uh, they, they went down there and they were like, man, it was so nice to get out of the house because they've been they've been hanging out in their house since like February. So, uh, but the national parks out here are still closed. The one thing. Um, Let's see, was the Grand Canyon open when I drove by it? I th there were signs saying that it was open, but then there were other signs saying that the road getting there was closed. So I don't know if there was like a washout on the road or what. But, um, um, and Lady, Lady Alex, yeah, I'm going to go back to the tent. Hey, what's up, Chris? <laughs> you got to get out here, man, and get camp these sites with me. Uh, but Lady Alex, yeah, I'll go back to the tent in the wintertime for sure. And I'm, I'm wanting to do uh, maybe some, uh, some like places up in Wyoming, Idaho, to kind of get out of Colorado a little bit and not do just the same old stuff that I've been doing here and getting some different climates and different, uh, different winter conditions. So, um, what happened to Cole and Phil? Oh, you mean Craig and Phil? Oh, uh, Alexis, uh, Craig, and, Craig is still in, um, he's in Williams, Arizona. And I think, I think, uh, Phil is either in Phoenix at his folks place or, or out, or out camping on Mingus Mountain somewhere. I think I'm not. I'm not too sure, but I'm, I'll meet up with him again. I just wanted to come here and hang out. Ah, uh, thank you, BRP. I'll get Sierra Tree for sure. She's over there. Let's see where she is. She's just chilling on the ground. She's a good dog, man. She just hangs out next to me, and then when I'm like, let's go for a walk, she just jams and keeps it going. Ah, uh, Kenny, thanks, brother. I appreciate that. So, um, but yeah, like I was saying here, I, uh, a couple things I want to do. I don't know if y'all caught the last video, but I want to. I want to break down and like put together these different packages on my website to like talk about, okay, if you're going to go out for the weekend, you know, here's the energy requirements I'd recommend. And you know, here's your solar. And if you're going to go full time, here's what I'd recommend. And then also with my backpacking gear and then truck camping gear. And so I'm going to put all that together this week. Cause I've got a really good reception here. I'm, I'm not even using the booster with the live stream. And I, I think uh, hopefully it's going pretty good. So, um, let's see here. Let's see what I've got. Uh, oh, Anthony, uh, the, the Dakar rear springs are holding up great. No, no sag at all. Um, let me look at them real quick. Let's go underneath here and we'll see. You can see um, right there. So I've not, I've not had any, I've not had any issues with those at all. I'm, I'm real pleased with them. And uh, the only thing was, I, I don't think I mentioned it. Oh, Alexandria, thank you, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, the only thing was, is I don't know if I told you guys, I don't, th I don't think I put it in the video, but I, I popped out the, uh, the screw for my, well, you can't really see it's too dark. The, the, the bolt that holds on my rear, my rear shock, the rear gas powered shock, um, it pulled through the frame. <laughs> so I don't know what happened there. I think that maybe when I got it installed, um, it, it, uh, wasn't installed properly and the, the little like, um, washer thing that was in there. I can't remember what it's called. I'm like I said, I'm really tired today. It's a little washer thing that's in there. Um, ah, thank you. Backup CPU. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, but that, that thing pulled all the way through the little hole that would, that where the, the screw comes up from the shock. And then that pulled all the way through too. So like it was making a ton of racket and there was this guy in Sedona. He was super cool. And he, he was like, yeah, come on into my shop. Nobody's around right now. I'll fix it for you. It'll take me like 30 minutes. It'll cost you like 40 bucks. And so he got me in and out real fast. I was able to jam on the road and get down here. So, oh, let's see. What else? I miss camping without masks. Yeah, I know, Liz. It's same with here. Like everywhere I go around here, you know, there's, I mean, there's people out, out hiking with masks on. I'm thinking that's probably not very good cardiovascularly. Cause like if you're out hiking and there's no one around, I think you're pretty safe. <laughs> I don't think that it's out here. And um, I saw people hiking around today when I was coming into this area that had masks on, I thought, man, that's gotta be uncomfortable. I mean, I've got a mask because I wear it just to make other people feel comfortable, but I know I'm fine. I don't, I feel fine. I'm just you know, hopeful that other people are good to go as well. Um, let's see. What about the truck? Anything new with the truck? Um, just basically the Renogy panel, you know, that folding panel that I have, it's um, sitting right here next to my truck. That thing's great because I'm able to pull in 200 Watts of power throughout the day. And if I get seven hours of 200 watts, then I have my, my 1500 watt hour amp, uh, battery full, which is great. And, um, let's see what else. Sierra, you want to come, you want to come sit with me and talk to everybody? Sit right here and just relax. 
Oh, yeah, there she goes. <laughs> That's awesome. Come here, sweetie. Come here. Come here. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Everybody wants to see you. So I got her some probiotics, and her her demeanor is like a million times better, and she doesn't have any bad breath anymore. So for those of you who have dogs that maybe – um, like she was, she was scratching a lot, like, like itching her, her paws and everything. And so I got her the, the, uh, the probiotics and I've had her on it for like two weeks now. I've noticed a huge difference. It seemed like when she'd jump out of the topper in the morning, um, that it would hurt her. And now it seems like she doesn't have any joint pain or anything like that. So I think maybe her gut biome was a little off and yeah, she's, <laughs> she's awesome. She's like, uh, not uh, most days I don't feel like going hiking and she's running around like crazy. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll go hike. And then I'm always in a good mood because you know, I'm able to get out on the trail and she's the one that encourages me to do so. And, uh, <laughs> she's a goofball too. Like we'll be sleeping in there and in the middle of the night. She'll wake up in the middle of the night. And she'll put one paw on one side of my face, one on the other and like lick my face for like five seconds and then just go back to sleep, <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> so, but now like, um, it was good hanging out with the, the other nomads in, in Arizona, I, you know, hung out, hung out with, uh, Craig, obviously Phil. And then I didn't really do many postings about it, but I did hang out with a couple people that were, uh, paragliders and then also hang gliders, like professional hang gliders. So that was pretty cool talking to them about their stories and what they've been through. And then one of the guys, Jason, uh, he's, he's an MIT grad and he's like, I'm done with my career. He's like 27. He's like, I'm not doing this anymore. And uh, I think he's like an aerospace engineer. And he just quit everything, and now all he does is just paraglide full time and lives out of his van, which is pretty cool. So, what's up, Craig? How you doing, brother? How's uh, how's Williams? I I hope that uh, the weather's still good and that all the weekend crowds are gone. But it sounds like you're in a pretty good spot down there. And I saw that video you posted about Rue to your Facebook page about this is how he tells me how he's hungry, how <laughs> he's all growling at you and stuff. <laughs> that was awesome. So, anyway. Yeah, we're just chilling here. It's it's snow on the ground still. Uh, some of the trails, there are trails that are on that side of the canyon over there that are all socked in with snow. I was hoping to get up on this one trail that gets up and, and goes goes real high up, um, but there's snow plugging the trails and I can't I can't get out there. So um, I've had four donuts today. Just to answer your question. <laughs> uh, so for for Mark, you know, it would it would depend on how many how many amps uh, you're your um electric blanket is is pulling out i had one that pulled like i think it was a, it was a 12 volt um electric blanket and it was made for for vehicles i got it at walmart it was like 20 bucks and it was a low amp pull and i think as far as watts goes it only pulled like 35 watts continuously so if you have like you know if you have a 350 watt hour battery ideally you could run it for 10 hours i guess is that about right but um let's see baby Oda, what's on there <laughs> but yeah, so I, I mean, with the battery that I have, it's going to be no problem. I could probably even run a space heater, you know, if it, like 101 amp hour battery is, is a, is pretty, pretty robust for that. So, uh, no, nah, the donuts weren't wrapped in bacon, but they, they, they had plenty of, um, plenty of icing on them. And I've still got, I kept the, the container it came in because it got kind of hot in my truck and the icing melted off. And so let me show you, got it saved right here. This is going to be like at my 10, 10 p.m. sugar sugar rush. This is all icing <laughs> from the donuts. I've got a major sweet tooth for those that don't know. But um, let's see. Why don't we try to go down over here? I want to go over the waterfall on this side. And I'm going to have to reposition the router. Um, but this is going to be cool because there's actually two places over here. Hey, Sierra, let's go over here, girl. Come on, let's go this way. We want to walk. Come on, let's go on a walk. All right, let me make sure my router still gets, yep, we got signal. All right, we'll be good. So let's head down down here. We're gonna go down to uh, this area. So here's the area where I took the thumbnail photo for like that, that you know, you saw for the live stream that was kind of, I'll check it out. Get the plants starting to come up now. Those ones, I don't know what they're called, but they shoot up super fast. So, all right, come on, girl. All right, so coming over here. 
Make sure I don't drop the computer. I just got it back from the shop. <laughs> That'd be bad, then. Let's see. Yeah, it's true. Who needs an electric blanket when I got Sierra? That's that's a fact. All right, so here is this really cool area. So as you can see, the water is pretty murky from the runoff, but this waterfall is amazing, and it's going to be great to sleep here tonight. So, um, but I like, I like how the water is coming off over here and running down the side of the cliff and then running into the creek. I mean, that's just massive amount of runoff that's going on. So good to go. All right, say, no, 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 Sierra, stay up here. All right, we're going to head back up. Let's go up here, sweetie. It's starting to chilly. It's starting to really cool off. Uh, it was about 70 when I pulled into camp, and now it's down to about 55, I think. So I might go throw a jacket on. I'm going to contact that ranch where I was going to do the off-grid volunteering this summer and ask them if they still need help uh, help this summer. I, I think that they – Colorado may open up like in July or something like that. So if it does, you know, I'd love to go over there and volunteer and be a part of that experience. And also, there's hot springs there every day, which would be great. <laughs> so, but it'd be cool to learn the history of that place. So, let's see. Um, yeah, there's bears out here. So, I just got to make sure when I'm cooking to clean my stove, everything like that, and not leave anything sitting out and button up the truck at night, you know, all that stuff. Let's see. Why don't we go sit over here? But, yeah, there's bears for sure out now. They usually come out like the latter part of March. And by by mid by mid May they're out in full force, which is good. That means they've already kind of eaten a bunch, and then you know, when they first get out, they're so hungry. Let's sit here. All right, all right. So it is nice and cool. Oh yeah, to Mark. I, I used to go uh, camp the the Poudre River Canyon a bunch and hang out the Mish and fly fish all those areas. That was a lot of fun. I really liked it up there. I don't really go there anymore, but um, what are you looking at here? But uh, but that, that definitely is a cool area. I like it a lot. Um, I don't really worry about bears. I, the, the question is, is, you know, do me and a lot of outdoor people worry about bears? I don't worry about them that much because the black bears are, are pretty skittish. I mean, if you, if you like, YouTube black bear being chased by Chihuahua, you'll see like a Chihuahua chasing away a black bear at camp because the black bears are, have a lot of anxiety and they're, they're kind of like elusive around people. They don't want to be around people. Now grizzlies are completely different, but I don't camp in areas where there's grizzlies and I don't want to. So, ah, what's up, Craig? Thanks dude. Making it rain. Um, but, but I, I you know, you gotta be mindful of it though. Like, you know, you don't want to have a bunch of food inside your topper, even with the black bears, because when you're away from camp, they can come and just tear into it. And I mean, that fiberglass topper is no match for a bear. But um, let's see. Uh, Walter, thanks. Yeah, I, I love reggae music, man. It's just, it's just, just chill. Anthony, no, uh, no more uh, Sasquatch stories. But you know, I, I, I hope to have another experience one of these days. That was crazy. But I haven't had anything since. You know, and that was like three years ago when that happened. So, um, what kind of music is bear repellent? Anything by Nickelback is bear repellent and then in sync, like bears don't come around. <laughs> Everybody hates that crap. Um, let's see. Yeah. I'd love to hang out with Forresty Forest from Canada. He's cool. And then I've been following too that, that, that full Alaska sin. Um, I don't know if you guys are, are following that channel, but I posted it up in the community page or a couple of days ago, that guy's got a really cool build that he's doing. And, um, I'd rec I'd recommend checking it out. So, um, input on RTTs. No, I, I, I've never used one. So unfortunately I don't have any input on that. I don't, I don't really know of anybody that does, uh, that does use them. So unfortunately I don't have any information for that, but, oh yeah, we'll, we'll definitely give Sierra a big hug. She's over there just on her like 40th nap of the day. <laughs> so, 
let's see what else around here oh uh so there's a hot spring around here that's that's actually just right off the off the highway and it's north of town and so i'm gonna film that i'm probably gonna go there let's see i think the weather tomorrow is supposed to be pretty nice i'll probably go there tomorrow and then or maybe the next day and then i'll be sure to include it in a future video and post it up but it's it's literally right off the road and a lot of people don't know it's there and actually hardly anybody knows it's there it's just this little pull off and then you hike up the hill and go across a little bit and there's a hot spring there and it's about 99 ni about 99 99 degrees so um it's good stuff uh to, to pazulo now and no, no like, I was, like i was saying before no sasquatch stories unfortunately no, no, no additional ones i'd I'd like to have another experience, but I'd like to have it if I was like in a fully encased steel box and no um, threat to danger. <laughs> so, so, did you hear that? I thought I heard something over there. But let's see. You know, um, things are, things are kind of weird out here. I, when I when I was rolling through the Navajo reservation, everything was on lockdown, and so that was kind of strange. And then I got here to San Juan County, and and somebody uh, in San Juan County. Uh, Colorado and a friend of mine messaged me and she's like, Hey, you can't camp up there. And I guess they had just lifted the restriction on dispersed camping. So I lucked out by getting here when I did, if I would have got here any sooner, there's a chance I, I would have gotten a ticket. So, um, Oh, to Matt, that's uh, that that's in Arizona. There's a rim called the Mogollon rim. It goes for 200 miles and like literally every campsite's incredible on it. So it starts on the Eastern side over by New Mexico and goes pretty much all the way across the state and like goes to the Sedona area and all that stuff. And so it's called rim country and it's amazing. Like pine and strawberry are some pretty cool towns that are over by there. So I'd recommend, you know, if you just look up rim country in Arizona, there's tons of, tons of information about it. Um, oh, what's up from Wichita? Bender's dad, my hometown. Let's see in Tucson, 95 in Tucson. Dang. That's, that's too hot for me. Yeah, I was getting up to like 80 up on, Ing on Mingus Mountain, and then I had some people show up that camped right next to me who were kind of jackasses, so I was like, I'm out of here, and I took off. <laughs> I just couldn't deal with it. Like the lack of sleep for a month, and then them just being completely moronic and doing like drum circles all night long and just just partying like crazy, and then, and then, then being mad at me in the morning for getting up and playing my music, but I played it pretty loud. But uh, I just decided to take off, so... And uh, Alexis, yeah, I fish. I actually I use a Tinkara fly fishing setup, and I'll I'll show you all the the rod that I use. I've got a um, I've, I've been using Tinkara USA for the past couple of years. Make sure Sears stays there. And um, the the rod I'm using now is called the Hane H A N E. Let me uh, grab it here. This is it as far as the rod, and it's a telescoping fly rod. And so what happens is is you. Uh, Let's see here. Let me put this down. I'll show you. So you, you, you telescopes out like this. You've got 10 feet of pull of, of a rod that comes out and it's super lightweight. It's 2.3 ounces. So it's really, it weighs nothing. And so there's, there's your fly rod right here. But if you notice there's, there's no reel and that's because it's Tinkara style. And so what you do is at the end here, there's a little string and a knot on it. And you tie a fixed line to that, which is it's a 13 foot fixed line, and you got like six feet of tippet. So you effectively have like 20 to 25 foot radius around you that you can fly fish. And um, it's really it's really nice for backpacking because it breaks down to nothing. And um, the case that it's in, like like this, is its case. And so it, you you take the string on the top here, and when you put it back in the, with the little cap, just put it in like that. And then it's real hard, and you're not going to break it. And then if you ever need to change out any of the sliding pieces, you just open up the back like this and then all the pieces slide out and then you can, you can change out whichever one. So if you break one section of it, it's not, not difficult to repair it. And this is actually a Tinkara USA shirt it's on the back there. You got that. I went to the Tinkara USA summit. Uh, it was in Estes park at the boy scout ranch there. It was like, I think it was in 2015, right after I hit the road. And, um, the guy, Daniel, who started Tenkara USA, he would fly in these uh, Japanese, uh, like like full on, like five or six generation, fifth or sixth generation Tenkara uh, Japanese families that were living up in the high country in Japan. And they would tie their own own flies and, and they, they, they tie them to where they're backwards. So like all the, 
like if you don't look at a normal fly, usually it's like the, the hairs are coming down and then over the hook, but those are different they're, And then also too, they're barbless. And so it doesn't hurt the fish's mouth. And it was really cool to, to listen to them talk. And it was through an interpreter, but I mean, these people were just old school, man. And they would take, Oh, that was cool. The bird just came flying right, right over my head. Um, that, that what they do up there, those, those, those bamboo forests, just, just, um, uh, the, 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 the uh, bamboo forest just line the, like the side of the rivers there. So they just go and just grab a piece of bamboo and tie a string to the end and start fishing. And they, and they just straight slay it. And so it's pretty cool to, to listen to that story. But that Daniel guy went over to that, to that area and spent years with them and just learned it and then brought the, the brought it over to the States. And that was about like 10 years ago when it was introduced to the States. So it was pretty cool. And then for Mark, um, no, it's actually, a, um, it's a Tenkara USA. Um, rod I'll, I'll put all the information when i when i get done with this in the video description underneath the live stream i'll put in the notes like which which tinkara rod is it and what i use and everything and then let me show you uh yeah keith i've broken a ton of tinkara tips man <laughs> and and some some main sections of them as well let me, let me show you the uh let's see what did i do with that i'm gonna i'm trying to find my there's my bag. All right. So I'm showing you the spool that the, that the fixed line comes on. And so, um, let me get this out real quick. Sierra, come over here, girl. Don't go too far. So when I go out fishing, I can, I can effectively go out and fish with just this. So I've got the the line on here, and this is the line that that, that attaches to the end of the Nakara rod. And then if you see here, I've got a fly on here. It's already there. And then this holds additional flies there. And then you can put two fixed lines on here with the tippet. Actually, you can do four because you can you can do you can do one fly on this side, and then and then one reverse, and then the same with on that side. So you can hold four different lines in here. So if you keep on snapping lines and and, and uh, breaking things you, you've got backup so you can you can effectively go fish with this and then I think I put my rod back in the topper but like this and then, and then the the uh, rod I typically go out with like a pouch like this though because it's just got some extra stuff in here but um, it's all good I mean it's I like fishing that way it's really easy just to zip that out slap it on the end of the Tenkara rod and you're fishing within 30 seconds and there's like less gear which I prefer that I mean, some of those traditional fly rod setups, it's like it takes, it takes forever to set up and it just can be kind of annoying. And one thing that's really nice is you don't have any slack line. So like with a traditional fly rod, if you're in a stream and you have like some slack line out, you, you might t uh, tangle it up on like the, the bushes or like the willows or the, they're called crumb holds up here in Colorado, like these crazy um, type of like, I don't know if it's a plant or a tree, but they, they just tangle up everything. And so the slack line can get can get tangled up in that which is real frustrating so with Tinkara you don't have that but a big disadvantage is you don't have the range so you know there's there's a drawback to it for sure um oh to liz yeah i mean i had a i had a what i thought was a sasquatch um if you look on my page over christmas i think it was christmas no it was back it was like about a month before christmas i posted a my account of what happened up at hancock lakes in colorado so what's up gabriel hope you're doing well man um, let's see here. Let's see. Phil from down to mob. <laughs> yeah. Phil from down to mob is definitely Chris Farley, either that or Jack black. He's like a, he's like a hybrid between the two. <laughs> so, and, uh, I'm excited to see what he's going to do with his, his Jeep. He's got some really good plans. He showed me a little bit of it. So, but I, I can't say what it's going to be. And then also too, I think he's going to keep that a liner and deck it out and put a stove in it for winter time and have like a little, little trailer for the winter which i i was like dude you got to do that it's easy i mean you just put a stove in there and you're set and um i i actually got rid of my awning room and also the stove i gave it to a boy scout club in uh, phoenix because i i just used that to test it out and the stove was already starting to get rusted i forgot to put oil on it when i when i um stored it and so the awning room that like if you all were watching the winter video the the room that came out here and, and came down and had the stove in it i'm gonna do something different for next winter i'll probably do like a canvas one for mud season, you know, for the shoulder season in both fall and spring. But but for winter, I'm still planning to fall on winter camp. And I've had a few companies hit me up and talk to me about possibly using their canvas tents for winter, but I think I'm just going to keep rocking the same tent that I've used for so long because I like that thing. So I, I don't know. I may change my mind, but for now, I think that's what we'll do. 
and um, just keep on rocking that because I know I know how to work with it. I know how to set it up real easy. I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, no, Alexis, I've I've not used the the natural rocket stove. So, sorry from camping in Patagonia. Who's on the line? Oh man, there's a puma. That's crazy. That would that would definitely freak me out. I, I had an incident where I had a really large mountain lion that I came across at the top of a pass, and I mean that, that thing, it was huge. It was like the Arnold Schwarzenegger of mountain lions. The thing was enormous. Yeah, I know, Cindy. I was hoping I'd love to see a UFO, but I, I've seen I've only seen one thing that was really strange. It was like a I was watching the for the meteor shower over in Sedona, and say, oh, Kirk, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, I was watching this this meteor shower in Sedona and this is actually just like two months ago. And they, um, there was like this, this thing that was going across the sky and I thought I'm like, Oh, it's a jet. You know, it's like, like there's one in the sky that's flying along. Then all of a sudden it made a 90 degree angle. I'm like, well, that's, that's probably not us. <laughs> so let's see. Oh yeah. Kevin, that bio light's great. It's like, you know, the only thing that's kind of a bummer right now is with the fire ban, I can't use it, but, but that, that stove is awesome. I love using that thing. It's just so nice just not having not not needing to carry any propane. So you've seen three UFOs? Wow, dude, Kenny, I want to hear about that, man. That sounds cool. I totally obviously I think everybody believes in that stuff now, especially all the stuff the government's been releasing with the stuff they've got on radar. But I think we all know it's been covered up for a long time. And the statistical probability, I mean, it just makes sense that there's something else out there. So random question. What are the collapsible water containers you have? Oh, yeah, those are – oh, crap. What is that? I got to go look. Let me go see. I've got – I don't think I have the label on it anymore. But I've got the business card of the company. Let me see here. Hang on one second. Oh, no, yeah, I got it. Oh, it's a Smart Bottle Inc. It's, it's barely there. SmartBottleInc.com. So – I've got to I've got to get more. And to, to reorder, you can just visit their website, or the, the number is eight two eight six five eight zero nine one two. But those things are awesome, and those they're really durable. That that two and a half gallon one that I had, that I would just throw around like crazy. I had no, actually, I'm sorry, it wasn't two and a half gallons, five gallon. I would throw that thing around and beat it up, and I throw it on rocks. And that thing, after six months, it finally pun uh, punctured a little tiny hole in it. So I'm I'm pretty impressed with it. The thing I like about it too is like. Those things can form to wherever they're at, so you can sit, uh, sit them on a on like a a, um, a table or a rock or whatever that's not exactly level, and it's not going to like slide off. So, yeah, I heard that road showers bought by Yakima, and I heard that they jacked the price up a lot on them. There's like it's like four fifty now for the seven gallon one. So, I think that they, I think they're asking a little too much. Let's see. Space Force, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to be part of the Space Force. I want to be on Elon Musk's uh, trip to Mars. That'd be that'd be killer. Um, Sierra is right over there. Sierra Center Frame. What's up, girl? What you looking at? She likes to kind of like sit about thirty or forty feet from me and just kind of hang out and 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 keep an eye on everything from camp. She'll also go like right around the corner to where I can't see her and she'll like she'll like sit there and stare at me through the trees and I and I'll, every once in a while I'll catch her and I'll be like, "What are you doing?" She's just sitting there staring at me. So, uh, hey, what's up Keith? Let's see. I don't know. Plug and play. Yeah, no, you don't need any charge controllers with the Renogy panels with the with the Max Oak or the Jackery. Um, I don't use the Jackery anymore. I just use the Max Oak, but it it works great. And then I've also got some some like three to one plugs, so I could I can essentially run 300 watts up there. But right now I just have two panels for 200 watts. But uh, thank you for that, by the way. Um, oh, they kept the pricing the same. Okay, I I didn't realize that when I got mine. I see mine was a Kickstarter, so I mine was for 250 bucks or 225 bucks for the five gallon one. But I think they made a bunch of changes to the seals and and uh, the nozzle and all those things. Mine's pretty pretty DIY shop kind of feel to it, <laughs> but it still works. I'm, I'm impressed because I, I don't ever drain that thing in the winter. I mean, it freezes and the seals freeze and everything and none of them have popped yet. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, to T Jones. Yeah, I left, I left uh, Arizona yesterday. I got here last night. So I camped outside of Mesa Verde last night, national park and ran some errands in Cortez, got some things in there and then rolled up here and just got to kind of bounce around this area for a little while. It's supposed to get down to, 
I think around mid to low twenties during the evening, uh, sometime this week. So that'll be kind of fun to do that. Cause I've got, I've still got my cold weather gear, so I'll, I'll be fine. Yeah, I got I got in on the deal really good with the with the road shower. So, um, let's see. But yeah, I I'm gonna take the router with me when I go up to that hot spring. So um, if I can if I can get service up there, I'll definitely bring you all along with me. And then while I'm here, I'm I'm gonna just jam out a bunch of content and I'm gonna try to post a video about once a day. I do have a bunch of video from Sedona from Oak Creek. I, I was down in Oak Creek by myself and I had an amazing time fly fishing, but I ended up just like hiking around and checking it out. Cause like Oak Creek is usually just slammed full of people. And I was literally there for four hours. I didn't see one other person. So I've got that. And then also down in West clear Creek, which is an amazing place to go fly fish. And I'd really recommend uh, anybody that even if you just want to hike, just go down there and check it out. But that's up by pine, Arizona. It's called West clear Creek Canyon. And it was amazing. So I'm going to make that video up tonight. And then, um, excuse me, probably include some drone footage that I got over the water and then tomorrow I'll start hiking around the area here and kind of seeing what's all, what's all around. So 92 in the Springs, man. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't realize it was getting that hot on the front range yet, but I, I guess we're getting into summer. So that makes sense. Combat fishing elbow to elbow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that, that Oak Creek. I can only imagine when it's, when it's, uh, when it's full. I mean, I, I literally could pick any spot and, I was like swimming in the water. It was a, it was perfect temperature. I was fly fishing only. I didn't actually actually catch anything. I got like three strikes, but I was like so busy looking around because Oak Creek Canyon is so cool that um, I, I didn't hook any fish. Now, when I was in West Clear Creek, I, I did get some fish in there, some trout, and then I saw some some trout or some fish that I didn't recognize, and they weren't like the sucker fish, and I don't think they were trout, but they were all. I mean. They, there's like fish everywhere. You look in the water and they just scatter, you know, and there's everywhere. It's amazing. So if you go to, to Arizona to like that, that area um, over by pine and strawberry, definitely check out West clear Creek uh, Canyon. It's, it's kind of, um, it's kind of a popular area now. So you're going to get a lot of people on the weekends, but the weekdays there's not anybody there. So yeah, I know this, the snow here, there's, there's actually quite a bit. I'm, I'm at 10, I'm at like 9,000. Let's see. Actually, let me grab my GPS. I think I'm at like 9,800 feet and I was going over a pass earlier that was 11,000 feet and that one had a lot of snow on it. So let's see. Well, I don't, I don't know where my GPS is, but I think I have it. I think I have it synced up with Bluetooth on my phone here. No. Oh yeah. So it says 9,872 9, feet, I guess. So, oh, is anybody else lagging? Okay. I was going to see if my router, oh, I need to plug it in. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go out here in a second. It's blinking red, which means the battery's about ready to go. Let me get this plugged in. And I'm going to log off soon because I'm going to get some dinner going. And, uh, the sun's going down here sooner, it seems, than Arizona, just as far as, like, I think it's on the same time zone. And so with me driving back here, obviously getting further east, the sun would go down sooner. So, um, oh, to Victoria, May, uh, I just put that up in the winter, uh, in the summertime. I don't use that big tent. It's in a storage unit that I have. I've got a, I've got a shipping container over in Del Norte, Colorado. And so all the, like, the stove is over there, and same with the tent. And all the winter gear and then in, um i just like jet around in the summertime and then in the winter i go back there and pick it up and i'm actually going to stop by there after i get done camping here and switch out some of this war uh gear that i have for a little bit of warm weather gear let's see good i'm doing this oh cool thanks most i appreciate it so well i think let's see gabriel no i i don't do any rafting and actually I'm, i've i've only been on See, so I've only been on like a raft, I think like about a, about a handful of times. And one was over in the Roaring Fork River Valley, Glenwood Springs area. Did that a couple times. Um, let's see, where else did I go? Actually, no, that's the only area I've ever been is over by Glen Can Glenwood Springs and like Glenwood Canyon, which was really cool. I mean, it's an amazing area. But um, yeah, let's see. 
All right, I think we're going to log off because I'm going to get some dinner because I'm starving. But um, I will definitely keep you all updated with what's going on here. I'll keep you updated with the topper build, you know, with the shingling that I'm going to do on the side. Hopefully I can do that here while I'm at camp and uh, get that all squared away. And then when I go to that hot spring, I'll be sure to um, take the camera and, and everything. I'll, I'll at least get it documented. If, if I could live stream over there, it'd be great. But if not, you know, I'll just uh, document it, put it in a future video. So, but thanks for, thanks for checking in. I, or thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Thanks for everybody that hit me up on super chat there. And I um, hope you all have a good night. So, ah, thanks Kenny. All right. Y'all take care.